evening and welcome to our final performance of The Devil and Daniel Webster. This one act production is in partial fulfillment for my Master's of Fine Arts degree in Dramatics. I've had the opportunity to direct this show under the instruction of Dr. Charlene Monk of the Performing Arts Department. After the show, our cast will be in the side hallway if you wish to greet them, which we suggest you do. They're great people. Uh, also, we have the wonderful opportunity of opening every production in prayer. So you, will you stand and pray with me? And we'll open this up. Dear Heavenly Father, oh, I just praise you and thank you so much for The Devil and Daniel Webster, this production. Just how much fun uh, we've had putting it on, Lord, as far as, far as costume and tech and and blocking, and uh, Lord, I pray that you will give all the actors energy, and I thank you so much for this audience. I pray that you will just let them have a, tons of fun as we present everything we've worked for, but Lord, I pray that ultimately this is for your honor and your glory, not our own, Lord. In your name, amen. Handsome couple. Oysters for supper. And layered cake. Layered cake. Set to your partners, dozy do. Mary and Jabez. Jabez and Mary. Where's the state senator? Where's the lucky bride? Handsome oh. steppers. She's pretty as a picture. It makes me feel all teary eyed. Seeing them so happy. Wonder where he'd gone at all. Stone was always poor. Well, he ain't poor now. It makes you wonder just a mite. Oh, don't be grudging to him. But I do wonder where he got it all. Money landed riches, of course. Just came out of nowhere. I wonder where he got it all, but well, that's his business. Oh, hey, let's hear from the happy couple. Hey, Jabez! Let's hey, hear from the happy Might as well. It's the last time he'll have the last word. <laughs> now, Henry Banks, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. I told you so, Jabez. Speech, Jabez. Speech, Speech, Jabez. Speech. 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 friends. I'm not much of a speaker. Despite you electing me to state senate and all, oh, oh, that's that's great. Great. Yes. but we're certainly glad to have you here, Mary and me. And we want to thank you all for coming. And furthermore, we want to thank both the wig ticket, J. Benz. Hooray for Daniel Webster! <laughs> and I'm glad High Foster said that. For those are my sentiments as well. Mr. Webster has promised to honor us with his presence here tonight, and I am sure we will give him a real New Hampshire welcome. Of course, sure will. Yes. And, well, meanwhile, there's Mary and me. And we all hope you have a good time, or else we won't feel right about getting married at all. Because I know I have been lucky. And I hope she has been too. And we're going to be happy or bust the trace. Come and get the pie, folks! Oh, pie! <laughs> Mary. Mr. Stone. Mary. My husband. Husband. That's a pretty big word. It's a good word. Are you happy, Mary? Yes. So happy, I'm afraid. Afraid? Oh, I suppose it happens to every girl. Just for a minute. It's like spring, turning into summer. You want it to be summer, but the spring was sweet. I'm sorry. Forgive me. It just came and went like something cold, as if we had been too lucky. But we cannot be too lucky. Not you and me. If you say so, Mr. Stone, but you don't even know what sort of housekeeper I am. And Aunt Pepsi says- Bother your Aunt Pepsi. Because there's nothing else that matters more in the world. And you don't know something else, too. What's that? How proud I am of you. Ever since I was a little girl. Ever since you carried my books. Oh, I'm sorry for women who can't be proud of their men. It must be a lonely feeling. There are certain things, Mary, that a man <coughs> does or might do when he has to make his own way. I know. Terrible things like being the best farmer in the county, and, and a, the best state senator. And a few things besides, but you remember one thing, Mary. Whatever happens, it was all for you. And nothing's going to happen because he hasn't come yet, and he would have if it was wrong. But it's wonderful to have Mr. Webster come to us. I wasn't thinking about Mr. Webster. Mary, there's something I must tell you. I should have told you before, but I couldn't bear it. Only now is it all right. Ten years ago, what happened was. Richard's the greatest man in the U.S. Old friends, it does 
be good to hear you. But don't cheer me. I'm not running for president this summer. <laughs> I'm here on a much better errand, to pay my humble respects to a most charming lady and her very fortunate husband. Tarnation busted a string. She's always busting strings. <laughs> We're all proud of State Senator Stone in these parts. We know what he's done. Ten years ago, he started with a patch of land that was nothing more than rocks and mortgages. And now, well, just take a look around you. I don't know if I've seen a likelier farm, not even at Marshfield. But I hope, before I die, I have the privilege of shaking this man's hand as governor of this state. I don't know how he's done it. I couldn't have done it myself, but I know this. Jabez Stone wears no man's collar. That's That's right. Right. And if I know Jabez, he never will. But I didn't come here to talk politics. I came to kiss the bride. <laughs> Congratulations, Jabez. You're a lucky man. And now, sir, if our friend in the corner would give us a tune on her fiddle. Remember me, Mr. Webster? I have the state house in Concord. Glad to see you, Mr. Webster. I voted for you ten times. I said if our uh, friend in the corner would give us a tune on her fiddle. Excuse me, Mr. Webster, but the very devil has gotten into this fiddle of mine. She was doing all right up to just a moment ago, but now I've tuned her and tuned her, and she won't play a note I want. Maybe you need some more rosin on your bow, fiddler. Maybe I do, and maybe I don't. But who are you? I don't remember seeing you before. Oh, I'm just a friend. A humble friend of the bridegroom. I'm afraid, Mr. Stone, I came in the wrong way. You've changed the place so much since I last saw it that I hardly knew the front door. But I assure you, I came as fast as I could. It doesn't matter. Mary, Mr. Webster, this is a friend of mine a legal friend from Boston. I wasn't expecting him to come. Oh, Mr. Stone, an occasion like this, I wouldn't miss it for the world. Charmed, Mrs. Stone. Delighted, Mr. Webster. But don't let me break up the merriment of the meeting. Boston lawyer, eh? Uh, you might call me that. And what have you got in that big tin box of yours? Law papers? Oh, curiosities for the most part. I'm a collector, too. Don't hold much with Boston curiosities myself. And you know all about fiddling, too, don't you? Know all about it? Oh, just, just a little. <laughs> don't shrug your shoulders at me. I ain't no Frenchman telling me that I needed more raw than... Please! Sorry, Mary, Mrs. Stone, but I've been playing the fiddle at Cross Corner Weddings for 25 years. And now here comes a stranger from Boston telling me that I need more rosin. What's my good friend? Rosin, indeed. Here, play it yourself and see what you can make of it. <laughs> Shall I, Mr. Senator? Oh, Mr. Stone. Mr. Stone, are you ill? No, no. Is, is it hot in here? <laughs> don't you worry, Mary. It will be all right. No, no, Mary, Mr. Webster. Oh, don't let him. Oh, let him play. Let him play. Don't you see he's bound to? Don't you see there's nothing we can do? The devil's in that fiddle. Oh, it just needs some tuning, some special tuning. And now, for this happy, this very happy occasion, I'll play a song of young love. Oh, Mr. Webster, Jabez, stop him. Don't you see his hands? He's playing with gloves on his hands. What? <laughs> young William was a thriving boy. Young Mary Clark was all his joy. He said he'd love her all his life. She said she'd be his loving wife. But when in church he tried to pray, the devil took the words away. Young Mary Clark, young Mary Clark, I now must go into the dark. Young Mary lay upon her bed, Alas, my William is dead. He came to her, a bleeding ghost. Stop! Stop, you miserable wretch! Can't you see your starling, Mrs. Stone? And now, sir, out of this house! You're a bold man, Mr. Webster. Too bold, perhaps. And anyways, it wasn't my fiddle, it was- You idiot! Give me back my collecting box! Boston lawyer, eh? Well, I don't think so. My Chico! Why, take nothing but a moth. 
A white moth. A flying thing. A common moth. Tell it polyphemus. But it ain't. It ain't no common moth. I seen it. And it's got a death's head on it. Help me, neighbors. Please help me. What's that? What's that? It wails like a lost soul. A lost soul? Help me, neighbors. It sounds like Miser Stevens. Miser Stevens? It sounds like Miser Stevens, and you had him in your box. But how can that be? He ain't dead. He, he ain't dead. I tell you, he ain't dead. He was just as mean and spry as a woodchuck Tuesday. Listen. The bell. The church bell. The bell that rang at my wedding. The church bell. The passing bell. The, the funeral bell. Help me, neighbors. Help me. I sold my soul to the devil. I'm not the last or the first. Help me. Help Jabez Stone. Ah, would you? Lost. Lost forever. Forever. Lost like Jabez Stone. Tell them, dear. Answer them. You were good. You were brave. You were innocent. Answer them, Mr. State Senator. Where did you get all your money, Jabez Stone? Jabez Stone? What price did you pay for it, Jabez Stone? Help me. Help me, please. Neighbor, please. Help me, he please. He sold his soul to the devil. Oh, devil. No, no, no. I didn't mean. I didn't know. He please. sold his soul to the devil. To the devil. <gasps> no, 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 no. My dear, my dear. No, Mary, it's all true, it's all true. But you must hurry. Hurry? Hurry after them, back to the village, back to your book. Mr. Webb will keep you safe. Are you telling me to run away from you, Mr. Stone? You don't understand, Mary, it's true. We made some promises to each other. Maybe you've forgotten them, but I haven't. I said it's for better or worse. Well, it's for better or worse. I said in sickness or in health. Well, that covers the ground, Mr. Stone. But Mary, you must, I command you. For thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. That was Ruth in the book. I always liked the name Ruth. I always liked the thought of her. I always thought, I'll call a child Ruth sometime. I guess that was just a girl's notion. Oh, Jabez, why? I was a youngster. A youngster with a lot of ambitions and no way in the world to get there. I wanted city clothes. I wanted a big white house. I wanted to be state senator and be someone people can look up to. But all I got on the farm was a crop of stones. You could work all day and all night. And that was all you ever got. But it was pretty. That hill farm, Jabez. You could see all the way across the valley. Pretty? It was a fever and angue. It was stones and a blight. If I had a horse, he'd get colic. If I planted a garden, the woodchucks ate it. I'd lie awake nights trying to figure out a way to get somewhere. But there wasn't a way. And meanwhile, you were growing back up on the farm. I couldn't bring you to a place like that. Do you think it's the place that makes a difference to a woman? I, I'd have kept your house. I'd have stroked the cat and fed the chickens and seen you wipe your shoes on the mat. Jabez, I wouldn't have asked for anything more. But why didn't you tell me? It happened before I could. It was an average day. Just an average day. I was, well, there was a mean east wind and a mean small rain. I was plowing and the sheriff would clean up rock that hadn't been there the day before didn't have money for a new one, and didn't have money to get it mended. So I said it out loud. I'll sell my soul for about two cents. Well, that's all there was to it, I guess. It came later that evening. That fellow from Boston. The dog looked at him and ran away. Well, I had to make it more than two cents, but he was agreeable to that. So I pricked my thumb and signed the paper. It felt hot when he touched it, and I keep remembering it. And he's kept his end of the bargain. I've got this house. I've got the riches. I've married you, and oh, oh, what shall I do? Let us run away. Let us creep and hide. You can't.
can't run from the devil. I've seen his horses. Miser Stevens tried to run away. Then let us pray. Let us pray to the God of mercy that he redeem us. I can't pray, Mary. The words just burn in my heart. I won't let you go. I won't. There must be someone who can help us. I'll get the judge or the squire. Who will take a case against Old Scratch? Who will face the devil himself and do him proud? There isn't a lawyer in the world who would dare do that. There must be. Good evening, neighbors. Did you say something about lawyers? Oh, Mr. Webster! But Daniel Webster, I thought you went back to You'll the excuse me for stepping out for a moment. I was merely taking a stroll on the porch in the cool of the evening. Fine summer evening, too. Well, it might be, I guess, but that kind of depends on the circumstances. Mm, I suppose so. But I happen to overhear a little of your conversation. Are you so in some sort of trouble, neighbor? Sore trouble. Some sort of legal trouble, I understand. You might call it that. Sort of a mortgage case in that sense. Oh, Jabez. <laughs> mortgage case. Well, I don't generally plead now, except before the Supreme Court. But your case does present some unusual features, and I've never deserted a neighbor in trouble yet. Oh, Mr. Webster, can you help him? It's a terrible lot to ask you, but all well, you see, there's Mary. And if you could see your way to I it. I will. Oh, Mr. Webster, thank you. <laughs> there, there, Mary. After all, if two New Hampshire men aren't a match for the devil, well, we might as well give it back to the Indians. <laughs> so, tell me, when is he coming, Jabez? Soon. Tonight. All right, then I better refresh my memory. The mortgage is due... It's ten years due. All right, then, uh... I have to ask you this. Did you sign it of your own free will? Yes, it was of my own free will, but I cannot deny that. Hmm. That's a trifle unfortunate, but... We'll see. Oh, Mr. Webster, can you save him? Can you? I will do my best. But that's all you can say until you see what the jury looks like. But even you, Mr. Webster. Oh, I know you're Secretary of State. I know you're a great man, and I know you've done wonderful things, but it's different. Fighting the devil. I've fought John C. Calhoun, madam. And I've fought Henry Clay. <laughs> and by the great shade of Andrew Jackson, I'd fight 10,000 devils to save a New Hampshire man. You hear this, Mary? Yes. And I trust Mr. Webster, but there must be something I can do to help. There is one, madame, and a hard thing, too. As Mr. Stone's counsel, I must formally request your withdrawal. No! Madame, think for a moment. Since you are his wife, your testimony would be prejudiced. And frankly, madame, in these next few moments, it will be no place for a lady. But I can't. I can't leave him. I can't bear it. You must. Mary, you must. Pray, madam. You can help him in your prayers. Are the prayers of the innocent unavailing? I'll pray. I'll pray, but a woman's more than a praying machine, whatever men may think. <laughs> and how do I know? Trust me, madam. <laughs> now may there be a blessing and a light betwixt thee and me forever. For as Ruth unto Naomi, so do I cleave unto thee. Set me as a seal upon thy heart, as a seal upon thine arm. For love is strong as death. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. As Ruth unto Naomi, so do I cleave unto thee. The Lord watch between thee and me when we are absent one from the other. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Webster. I knew she had to leave, but I couldn't be the one to tell her. Oh, Mr. Stone. <laughs> I know ladies, and I wouldn't be surprised if she had her ear to the keyhole. But she's best out of tonight's business. How long do we have, Jay Not long. Not long. Oh, Mr. Webster, harness your horses and get out of this place. You brought me a long way, neighbor, to tell me you don't like my company. I brought you the devil's own way. I can see it now. He's after us both. Him and his collecting box. Well, he can have me if he likes. I don't say a relish in it, but I made the bargain. But you're the whole United States. He can't get you. He mustn't get you. I'm obliged to you, neighbor Stone. Ah, I thought your clock was a trap slow, neighbor. Oh, Mr. Webster, this is a pleasure. Attorney of Records for Jane Stone. Might I ask your name? Oh, I've gone by a good name. But 
Scratch will do for the evening. And now, if you'll help me take possession of my property. Mm, not so fast, Mr. Scratch. Produce your evidence if you have it. Slattery, Stanley, Stevens, and Stone. You'll find it in all due and legal form, too. Our firm has its reputation to consider, after all. Well, it appears, I say it appears to be properly drawn, but of course we can test the signature. Is this your signature? You know very well it is. Be quiet, Stone. But this is a trifling matter. The precious document isn't worth the paper it is written on. The law clearly permits no trafficking of human flesh. But my dear Mr. Webster, courts in every state of the Union have held that human flesh is property and recoverable. Read your Fugitive Slave Act, or shall I cite Brander versus McCray? Ah, but if you cite Maryland versus Four Barrels of That was overruled, as you know, my dear sir, North Carolina versus Jenkins and Co. You seem to have a very good acquaintance with the law, sir. Oh, that is no fault of mine. Where I come from, we do have the, uh, pick of the bar. Now come now, sir. There's no need to make hay and oats of a trifling matter. When we're both sensible men, my client is quite prepared to offer a compromise. A very substantial compromise. Hang it, man. Will will offer $10,000. $20,000. 30000 Name your figure. I'll raise it if I have to mortgage Marshfield. Quite useless, Mr. Webster. The only thing I want from you is the execution of my contract. But this is absurd. Mr. Stone is a state senator. His property has greatly increased in value. But the principle of caveat in tour still holds, Mr. Webster. Well, you're not having this man. Mr. Stone is an American citizen, and no American citizen may be forced under contract by a foreign prince. We fought England for that in 12, and we'll fight for it again. Foreign? And who calls me a foreigner? <laughs> well, I've never heard of the death of your claiming American citizenship. And who with better right? When the first wrong was done to the first Indian, I was here. When the first slaver put out for the Congo, I stood on her deck. Am I not spoken of still in every church in New England? Tis true. The North claims me to be a Southerner, and the South to be a Northerner. But I am neither. I'm merely an honest American like yourself, but of the best descent. For to tell you the truth, Mr. Webster, though I don't like to boast of it, my name is older in the country than yours. Aha! Then I stand on the Constitution. I demand a trial for my client. Oh, but this case is hardly one for an ordinary jury. And indeed, the lateness of the hour. Let it be any court you choose, as long as it is an American judge and an American jury. It could be the quick or the dead. I decide the issue. The quick or the dead? You have said. I summon the jury. Mr. Webster demands from churchyard mold to gallows grave. Brimstone pit to burning gulf, I summoned them. Dastard, liar, scoundrel name, I summoned them, appear. There's Simon Gerty, the renegade, the haunter of the poor glade, who joined Indian and war to hunt the pioneer. There's Sir Walter Butler, the loyalist, who carries a firebrand in his fist of massacre and shame. King Philip's eye is wild and bright. They slew him in the great swamp fight, but still, with terror and affright, the land recalls his name. But I hear teach the pirate bell, smite the strangler hot from hell. Dale, who broke men on the wheel, Morton of the tarnished steel, quick or dead, quick or dead, Broken heart and bitter head. True Americans, each one, traitor and disloyal son. Twelve great sinners, tried and true, for the work they are to do. I summon them, I summon them. Appear, appear, appear. 
A jury of the dead? Of, of the, the dead. dead! Are you content with the jury, Mr. Webster? Quite content, though I do miss General Arnold from the company. Oh, Benedict Arnold is engaged upon other business. Ah, oh, you ask for a justice. Justice Hawthorne is a justice of experience. He presided at the Salem witch trials. Others repented of the deed later. But not he, not he. Repent of such notable wonders and undertakings. Nay, hang them, hang them all. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. All ye who have business with this honorable court of special session this night, step forward. Call the first case. The world, the flesh, and the devil versus Jabez Stone. Who appears for the plaintiff? I, your honor. And for the defendant? I. The case, the case. He'll have little luck with this case. The case will proceed. Your Honor, I move that this court be dismissed on the grounds of improper jurisdiction. Motion denied. On the grounds of insufficient evidence. Motion denied. Motion denied. Denied. Motion denied. I will take an exception. There are no exceptions in this court. No exceptions. No exceptions in this court. It's a bad case, Daniel Webster. A losing case. Your Honor, the prosecution will proceed. Your Honor, gentlemen of the jury. This is a plain, straightforward case. It need not detain us long. Detain us long. It will not detain us long. It concerns one thing alone, the transference, barter, and sale of a certain piece of property. To wit his sword, J. Bez Stone, farmer of Cross Corners, New Hampshire. This transference, barter, and sale, is attested by a deed. I offer that deed and mark it Exhibit A. I object. Objection denied. Mark it Exhibit A. Exhibit A. Mark it Exhibit A. We know the deed. The deed. It burns in our fingers. We do not have to see the deed. It's a losing case. It offers incontestable evidence of the truth of the prosecution's claim. I now call Jabez Stone to the witness stand. Jabez Stone to the witness stand. Jabez Stone, he's a fine fat fellow, Jabez Stone. He'll cry like a badger cake once we get him where we want him. Your Honor, I move that this jury be dismissed on the grounds of flagrant and open bias. Motion denied. Exception. Exception denied. His motion's always denied. He thinks himself smart and clever, Lawyer Webster. But his motion's always denied. Your Honor! Jabez Stone to the witness stand. Jabez Stone! Jabez Stone! Do you solemnly swear, testify, so help you, and it does no good for we don't care what you testify? I, I do? <laughs> what is your name? Jabez Stone. Occupation. Farmer. Residence. Cross Corners, New Hampshire. A farmer. He'll farm in hell. We'll see that he farms in hell. Now answer me this, J. Bez Stone. You better you know. There will be a cooler place in the fire if you do. Objection! This is intimidation! This mocks all justice! The protest is irrelevant, incompetent, and immaterial. We have our own justice. The protest is denied. Irrelevant, incompetent, and immaterial. We have our own justice. Oh ho, Daniel Webster! Did you, or did you not, sign this document? Oh, I signed it. You know very well I signed this. One of us. One of us now. We'll save the place by the fire for you, J. Stone. The prosecution rests. Remove the prisoner. Wait! I wish to cross-examine! I wish to prove! There will be no cross-examination. We have our own justice. You may speak if you like, but be brief. Brief. Be very brief. We are weary of her. Incompetent, irrelevant, and immaterial. They say he's a smart man, Webster, but he's lost his case tonight. 
Be very brief. We have our own justice here. Set me as a seal upon thy heart, as a seal upon thine arm, for love is strong as death. A seal? Ha <laughs> ha! A burning seal! Love is strong. Death is stronger than love. Love is strong. Set the seal upon Daniel Webster, the burning seal of the lost. Make him one of us, one with J. Besto! Be still! I was going to thunder and roar. I shall not do that. I was going to denounce and defy. I shall not do that. You have judged this man already with your abominable justice. See that you defend it. For I shall not speak of this man. You were demons now. But once you were men, I shall speak to every one of you. Of common things I speak. Of small things in common. The freshness of morning to the young, the taste of food to the hungry, the day's toil, the rest by the fire, the quiet sleep. These are good things, but without freedom they sicken. Without freedom they are nothing. Freedom is the bread and the morning and the risen sun. It was for freedom we came on the ships and the boats. It was for freedom we came. It has been a long journey, a hard one, a bitter one. But out of the wrong and the right, the suffering and the starvation, there is a new thing, a free thing. The traitors in their treachery, the wise in their wisdom, the valiant in their courage, all, all have played a part. It cannot be denied in hell, nor shall hell prevail against it. Have you all forgotten? Have you forgotten your forts? My fort. Rustle of the fort, the free fort. And have you forgotten your lost nation? My lost nation, my fires in the woods, and my warriors. And have you forgotten the sea and the way of ships? The sea, the swift ship sailing, the blue sea, forgotten. forgotten. Remember, remember. Forgotten. forgotten, yet remember. You were men once. Have you all forgotten? We were men once. We, we have, have not thought of it nor remembered, but we were men. Now here is this man with good and evil in his heart. Do you know him? He is your brother. Will you take the law of the oppressor and bind him down? It's not for him that I speak, it is for all of you. There is sadness in being a man, but it is a proud thing too. We are battered and scarred. We are tricked and trapped. We stumble into the pit. But out of the pit we rise again. No demon that was ever foaled can know the inwardness of that. Only men. Bewildered men. They have taken freedom with their hands and broken her and cast her out from the nation. Yet shall she live while man lives. She shall live in the blood and the heart. She shall live in the earth of this nation. She shall not be broken when the wits of the oppressors are broken and their names forgotten and destroyed. I see you, mighty, shining, liberty. Liberty, I see free men walking and talking under a free star. God save the United States and the men who have made her free. The fence rests. We were men. We were free. We were men. We have not forgotten our children. Our children shall all end be free. The jury will retire to consider its verdict. There is no need. The jury has heard, Mr. Webster. We find for the defendant, Jabez Stone. Not, not guilty. But, 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 but your honor. So you shall, and also you'll vow and covenant to never bother Jabez Stone or any other New Hampshire man from now till doomsday. For any trouble we wish to do, we can do it very well ourselves. Ah! Oh, they never really did run big in the barrel, but ah! I agreed. And make sure you keep to it. 
And then, well, I've got a ram named Goliath that can butt through an iron door. I'd like to put you in a field and see what he can do to you. But that would be hard on the ram, so I'll just call him neighbors and give you a shivery. No, Mr. Webster, please! Neighbors, neighbors, come and see what a long barrel, slab sided, lantern jawed, fortune telling note shaver I've got by the scruff of the neck. Bring on your pots and your pans, bring on your muskets and your flails. We'll drive them out of New Hampshire! We'll drive them scratch away! We'll drive them out of New Hampshire! We'll drive them scratch away! Forever and day, boys! Forever and day! Job done. I hope there's five for breakfast, David Stone. And whom God hath joined, let no man put asunder.